they investigate Zac Efron for these crimes? Did a pretty good job pretending, that's all I'm saying. Hey movie watchers, welcome to today's review of the Netflix movie Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile. Starring Zac Efron, Lily Collins, and some smaller roles played by Angela Serafin, Haley Joel Osment, and John Malkovich. And was directed by Joe Berlinger. If you're new to this channel, I'm going to talk about my likes, my dislikes, and then give you the breakdown. All my reviews have spoilers. So consider this to be your one and only warning. Okay, movie watchers, let's review. So the movie starts out at Ted and Liz's last meeting where she asks him for the truth and then it just jumps back in time to where and how they met. You kind of get some montage here where it shows Ted and Liz just kind of being a normal happy couple. And then we get to Ted getting pulled over and arrested and dealing with that whole thing. He gets out for a little bit, goes back home. Liz is very angry with him, but with the charming person that Ted is, he convinces Liz that he's innocent. Skip forward to this first trial. It looks like Ted is innocent actually, but then gets convicted anyway, which seems to be a little unjust. But once he gets convicted for that crime, then every city or state that had similar crimes committed uh, wanted their own form of justice as well, and they were all looking at Ted Bundy for those crimes. Colorado, Washington, Utah, Florida, everybody wants Ted for those string of murders. He ends up kind of escaping custody multiple times, but always ends up getting caught. His final trial becomes the first ever nationally publicized trial on television. The trial draws in numerous single women who are just drawn to his character and his charisma through the TV screen. It's really kind of weird. He ultimately loses all of his trials, gets convicted, and gets sentenced to the death penalty. Starting with my likes, like number one, the first thing I noticed I liked in the movie was Zac Efron's acting. I gotta say, he really pulled off the extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile aspect of his character. I really enjoyed the fact that as an actor, he legitimately understands and knows how to portray charisma on screen. And I honestly don't believe that many actors or actresses understand what charisma even is. But Zach pulls it off and he pulls it off very well. Up until that moment when they're shopping for the dog together, you believe almost every word that he says. He's extremely likable, extremely honest, or at least has the appearance of being honest. And it's not up until when he looks at the dog and the dog recognizes like the monster in him that you start to actually see him as sinister. Like number two, I enjoyed that the movie really focused on his trials and his public life and didn't focus on him actually committing any of the crimes. After all, I do think that this is where the story is, and I do not believe that giving any attention to the crimes would actually make the movie any better anyway. The story really is all about his public appearance, how intelligent he was, and how charismatic and likable he was. I mean, his character didn't seem like he could commit these types of atrocities. It was also mostly told from his girlfriend Kendall's perspective and how nobody knew what to believe to be the truth. He had so many people deceived for such a long time. I mean, even all the way up until his execution, many people thought he was innocent. Like number three, the movie's pretty accurate based on real life. And the only things that they got wrong from how it really went down, they changed on purpose to make the movie better. And I actually do think it worked. For example, how Kendall called the police to report Ted and the evidence that led her to do that was different in the movie than in reality. In reality, Kendall actually had multiple clues that would lead her to believe that it was him. But Joe wanted to leave those parts out of the movie so that we, as the movie watcher, could feel the devastation of the last scene where Ted writes Hacksaw on the window pane. According to Kendall, in real life, Ted actually never admits to anything like that or really comes that close to even doing so. He does say something on the phone to Kendall about how something's wrong with him and he had a really strong urge and something of that nature, but nothing that really indicates, yes, I committed these crimes. But overall, I do think the changes that these filmmakers made 
Uh, for the movie, I do think they made the movie better. I only have one dislike, but it comes in two parts. First, Ted Bundy was actually originally cleared for the crimes early on, meaning that he was a suspect, they looked into him, vetted him, and then cleared him of all wrongdoing. I think that should have been in the movie. I think it would have made the movie better. I think it would have made it more impactful for us as the movie watcher, starting out with the understanding that he's innocent. Secondly, and I understand why this part isn't in the movie, I just wished it was. The FBI spent a lot of time talking with Ted about his crimes and studying him, all in an attempt to better understand the psychological aspects of serial killers. Some of this stuff can be seen in the Netflix series Mindhunters, which I did enjoy and I think you should watch it. But this is a very interesting part of Ted Bundy's story and I really would have liked to have seen some of that, at least a little bit of that in the movie. But overall, generally speaking, I pretty much enjoyed the movie. I just wish those two things that weren't in the movie were. Movie watcher question. What is your favorite true crime movie or TV show? I'll leave my answer in the comment section down below. Okay, movie watchers, here's the breakdown. I'm giving the writing a seven and a half out of 10. I like some of the changes to the real life story, but ultimately they did change the real life story for their own benefit. And I can understand how that would put some people off. And I do think that there were some things they could have added to the story and would still would have made the movie better. The acting is getting a 10 out of 10. Zac Efron does such a good job that he could easily be another Ted Bundy if he wasn't so famous and well known. And I think everybody in this movie does a really good job. The cinematography gets a seven and a half out of 10. The camera work and the stylistic vision, I do think fit the movie very well, but there just wasn't anything really epic or exciting going on. I'm giving the directing an eight out of 10. Joe did a really good job with delivering this movie from the perspective that he wanted to tell it from. But I think if he added the fact that Ted was originally cleared from the police, that it would have made a bigger impact on the audience. Overall, extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile gets an eight out of 10 for me. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. I've got more reviews and discussions coming your way, so check back soon for those, and I'll see you on the next one.